nothing stands between you and your dreams. Literally nothing. The bigger the dreams, the bigger that nothing space is. It's only natural for a mind to start filling that empty space with things. Your doubts, your fears. They grow and grow until they seem to block your dreams from sight. And if you aren't careful, you may utter the worst of all curses. I can't. Those words are dream killers. They've doomed people to sit idle their whole lives, gazing longingly across at their dreams, wishing to be there, but shirking the blame because they can't. But can't is a lie. All it takes is a little courage, just enough courage to stand on, just strong enough to buoy you up above your own doubts and fears. Stretch it from where you are to where you want to be, then take a step. That will be the hardest thing to do, taking that first step. It always is. Everyday life is so solid, why leave it for something as impossibly thin as courage? A lot of people never do. But if you do take that first step, you will see that your courage can hold you up, and you will take a second step, and another. From the middle of that nothing, your fears will seem bigger than ever. They will try to drag you down into their depths, and your courage may sway. That is the worst feeling of all. But keep walking. You cannot fight fear. You can only walk through it until it has passed under you. Keep walking until your dreams fill your entire vision, because eventually, one of those steps will land you back on solid ground atop your dreams. The fear will be gone, and you will see with clarity that your dreams were never as far away as you imagined. Highlining is when you take a slack line and then you bring it to the highest point of two cliffs and you then sling those two cliffs or string up the line between those two cliffs and then walk across it. So you may be anywhere from 40 feet to let's say 800 or 1,000 feet off the ground in the middle of that line uh, and all you have is a leash in your harness uh, connected to those lines for your protection. My name is Ray Diaz, I'm from San Clemente, California, and I've been slacklining for about two years, and I've been highlining for about eight months now. Yeah. We use industrial rigging gear, so there's like span sets involved, we have uh, devices called web locks that are designed specifically to hold webbing in place so that way it's not going to slip under tension. My name is John Fate. I come from Lake Forest, California. I'm 28 years old. I've been slacklining for about seven years and highlining for about two and a half. There's quite a few different types of leashes you can walk with. So the standard is a harness and that's the safest way to walk high lines. You can also walk with a Swami belt, which is a harness that just goes around your waist so there's no leg loops. And I think Swami is my favorite type of leash. You have this freedom in your legs. There's nothing constricting them. Then of course you can go to the ankle leash where you tie the leash to your ankle. And that's a really good step before free solo, which is no safety at all. Free soloing high lines is when you walk with no security. And I never dreamed I would participate in that type of high lining, but as I progressed in ability, I started to become more curious about taking my slack lining to the top level. You really have to understand your own intuition because a lot of factors can make it dangerous. If you're tired, if you're not mentally in the same place as you should be for free solo, then that can affect your balance. The fun thing about free solo is just the amazing out-of-body experience you have when you're on a line without safety. My name is Faith Dickey. I come from Austin, Texas, and I've been slacklining for five years and highlining for four. I go highlining every weekend because it is a place where I can 
recreate myself every single time. Every highlining trip, I learn something new about myself, and it's very refreshing. And it's tons of fun. My God, it's just ridiculous. My name is Flip Dixon. I'm from San Clemente, California, and I've been walking on slack lines for about 10 years and doing highlining for about two years. There are so many feelings and thoughts and things happening when you're up on a high line. Whatever thoughts you have in your mind, if you can't relax and let them be, then, I mean, on the high line it's going to be 10 times that. You tend to get lost in moment of being on, a, being on a high line. It changes. When you're first learning to high line, it feels very alone. But now, it doesn't feel so alone. When I'm in the middle of a high line, I feel, I'm just very, I become very sensitive to everything that's going on around me. When I'm on a high line, Lots of things go through my head, but generally I go through a lot of inner dialogue. I battle a lot with my ego, and I have this voice of ego that's telling me I'm really good at highlining or that I'm really bad at highlining and telling me I'm going to fall. So I'm constantly struggling with this voice, trying to listen to my inner self and, and really do it because I love it, not for any other reason. Dealing with fear on the line is big part of every step that you take. I kind of just accept it, you know. Um, the exposure doesn't scare me as much as it did. Like, I used to be really gripped. Fear is extremely interesting to me. It's like related to death, ultimately. I'm on a slack line. I know what I'm doing, and I'm not gonna die. And when you can convince yourself that death is, is not involved here, it's not playing with you, then fear also goes away. It has a lot to do with just putting all of your inhibitions or worries or essentially all your fears, <laughs> like my friend Mike says, up on the shelf. You just put them up on the shelf and you forget about them. And that's the best way to deal with it. But everyone kind of has their own way. I manage my fear on the line by really trusting my gear. When you get out on the line, you just have to be confident in yourself and not let the fear get, take a hold of your mind. Uh, you know, and one way I like to do it is just kind of sit out on the line for a minute before I start to walk, stare at the anchor, take some really deep breaths, get as much oxygen into my mind, stay focused on where I want to be looking while I'm walking, and then when I feel ready and calm, I stand up and begin to walk.
Sometimes you get too excited and you want to like, you know, move the knees and move around a little bit and gyrate your hips and stuff and you know, sometimes it just has to be done. Sometimes it's a good tension breaker, sometimes it's just a good happy thing to do because I mean, you can't dance and look like a fool and not be happy, you know, so that's pretty cool. Nice send, Brian. Every highliner I've met has been just a very welcoming person and willing to teach what they know and they want you to learn it. And it's about community too. I mean in all the sports I've done I've never seen such an amazing community as in slacklining. You can meet friends around the world who you've never met before and stay at their house and they'll take you around their city and take you slacklining and you just automatically have friends everywhere. And, and that's incredible and that might be partially because the community is still small but I think it's something else. Slackliners don't like to fight. They just like to balance and have a good time. That's been breaking. But this is the life I chose. These rivers are like my bones. Magical things happen on the trail when you're on an adventure. We like to call that stuff trail magic. <laughs> 